Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. For those who don't know me, my name is Cecile and I'm an incoming freshman at Brown University. And basically this entire channel is just me giving college advice to you guys, helping you get through high school in the most straightforward way possible. I don't sugarcoat things and I don't pretend to be an expert, but I just share advice that I think helped me and helped other people that are at top schools right now because I care about you guys. So um, basically I am finally doing a Common App essay reading today. And this is something I really debated about doing because my Common App essay is really personal to me, but it's also really unique enough that I don't think anyone can copy it. And if you did, it would be strange because it doesn't really sound like a story you can copy. So I finally decided it would be good for me to share, especially because when I'm telling you guys like how to write a Common App essay, I try to like talk about weaving in symbolism and like making things sound a certain way, but I can't really describe that without like giving you an example. So I'm going to share my Common App essay now and I'm going to be reading off my computer. So sorry if the video is a little weird. <laughs> also, before I start reading my essay, I just want to let you guys know if you are a first generation student or low income student, follow my Instagram and keep on the lookout because I have an opportunity that's going to be super exciting for you guys where you're gonna get your essays reviewed completely for free. And I'm not supposed to give much information yet because the opportunity is not gonna be live until the second week of August, but I'm really excited. So follow me on Instagram, keep up with that. DM me if you want any information or some hints, but yeah, on to the video. I'm looking at my like essay doc, like my Google doc with literally like 80 pages of essays that I use to apply to schools and scholarships and stuff. And this is bringing back so many memories. This is like, Lucky making me uncomfy because of all the late nights I spent writing these. But it's fine. It's a growth process. I'm glad it's all over. And I'm low-key still proud of everything I wrote. But I'm just going to warn you guys, I'm a very performative speaker. I speak the way that I do in speech and debate when I'm reading things. So, yeah. Anyways. As a child, I was irrationally afraid of mushrooms. Particularly sliced ones. The intimidating slices always had a curved top attached to a rectangular stalk. To me, these pieces resembled faces, staring out for me from their two curved top eyes. The worst offenders resided on pizzas, poisoning the melted layers of cheese atop my favorite dish. I believed that they were always staring at me, judging my every move despite their inanimate nature. Nobody understood the anxiety provoked by this harmless fungus, but personally, I could not get over the fact that the mushroom's eyes were watching me. My childhood fear of the judgment that mushroom's eyes held became a fear of eye contact during my childhood. I was anxious that others were critiquing me with every glance. My reserved nature stemmed from this fright, and the thought of speaking in front of other people was enough to make sweat perspire on my forehead. But I no longer wanted to be characterized by my fear, nor did I want it to prevent me from communicating with others. One day, in sixth grade, I reached towards my face and removed my glasses, turning the world into an abstract portrait. My 2200 vision was no longer a weakness, but rather a strength. When I spoke, I did not fear eye contact as others' eyes resembled circles, empty of emotion and detail. This impairment allowed me to overcome my fear of communication, and I readily embraced my new persona. When my name was called, I could confidently rise up and express my opinion without worrying about my classmates' piercing stares. I was not afraid to be the person who cut the awkward silence in the room. It was this newfound discovery that sparked my love for public speaking and fostered my passion for speech and debate. Something that I previously dreaded became something that I voluntarily adored. During my presentations, I forced myself to understand that the clumps of color before me were people. This cognitive dissonance often confused me. I was uncertain about whether I was staring at everyone's eyes. Nevertheless, my pupils surveyed the room and rested upon different audience members when needed. My eyes could have been gazing at the audience's foreheads but the feedback praising my strong eye contact assured me otherwise. Through time though, my strategy began to weaken. I could hardly make out the words my teachers wrote and became reliant on squinting to glass to catch a glimpse of the world. Students and teachers alike joked about my squinting, urging that I wear the glasses I owned. Still, my hands could never reach for the frames. I was not fully aware that with every glance I dodged, I lost the opportunity to connect and see. It was not enough to listen. To truly hear someone, I had to be able to see their perspective, and to likewise see them. Whether I was performing a Cesar Chavez with my iconic Cisse Pue design at a history competition or giving a biology presentation on Joseph Lister, I felt a step. So, halfway through junior year, I did the unthinkable. I put my glasses back on. 
The fear of the world that was previously instilled in me dissipated as those around me encouraged and supported me. Although I still prefer my pizzas plain, my life is now anything but. I can finally get to know who people really are, beyond the blurred faces to which I was accustomed. Facial expressions convey what words cannot, and often show the true feeling someone is harboring. I plan to pay attention to these hints of insight, and to proactively strive to be the person others feel comfortable around. I know what it feels like to shelter myself, and I want to help those around me reach past what secludes them. Looking at the world through my plastic lenses, I now feel invincible, and no stare can take that away. Okay, so that was my coming up essay. And basically, I kind of wove the ideas of humor, like through the mushrooms and everything, with a really unique story, like removing my glasses because I was scared of eye contact and how it helped me with public speaking. Well, at least I thought it did, but it was actually just me avoiding the problem. Like, I would just remove my glasses and not be able to see anyone, and I thought that this was helping me because suddenly I was becoming a great public speaker because, like, I didn't have to worry about seeing people. But then I started to realize it was just literally avoidance, and it stressed me out. But I put my glasses back on, and the irony is I'm not wearing glasses right now, but I finally have contacts, so it's okay. I can still see and everything. But yeah, this was a story I literally... I never envisioned myself writing a coming up essay about this. This was just a personality trait of mine. Like from middle school to high school, people like knew me as the squinter because in the hallways, like I'd never see. And like, I literally would, <laughs> I'd use my phone and zoom in on the smart board because I didn't have my glasses and I couldn't see. It was just so embarrassing. And a lot of people made fun of me for it, but like, it's fine. It really helped me grow. And now I realize that I still look up in glasses. I'm not really self-conscious about that anymore, but yeah. I connected my idea of the glasses and the public speaking and all of that stuff. I started with that and then I connected it to my fear of mushrooms because I was like, hmm, I can make the connection of like the mushroom spaces and how that correlates with eye contact and stuff. So basically I started with the huge idea of what I wanted to convey in my coming up essay and then I just added in the humor because I thought they'd appreciate it, especially at the beginning because Honestly, when I'm reading essays, like the beginning is when I form my first impression about you. And if you have a beginning that really draws me in, I'm like, dang, I want to know about this person. And honestly, the fact that I was so like joking in my personal statement, I think some schools might have not appreciated that. But like UChicago and Brown, like the quirky schools like that. So I feel good about that. And also some of my essays were talking about how I liked parasites and a bunch of weird quirky stuff like I was not afraid to be myself and to crack jokes and stuff and I think that those schools appreciated that and honestly just be authentic is my advice like it really takes you a long way and if you're meant to be at that school and if you fit their environment you will ultimately end up there and that's what I have to say about that matter but honestly I could go on a whole rant about fit at colleges and how people just go for the names instead of thinking about where they could best fit in like it's fine I won't do that to you guys but anyways, that was my coming up essay. Um, honestly, my advice that I always follow is when you're writing an essay, make sure it's not an essay that someone else could put their name on and it would still match them. Make sure it's something so unique to you. Even if it's something as basic as an activity you did, you still had a different perspective about that activity that no one else had. And although you might not think so, you are unique no matter what you think, basically. And I, I'm not really worried about people copying this, but please don't copy my essay. I mean, you can you can get inspiration from the idea, but please don't copy it. But I also ultimately have no way to know. But I did apply to like every school possible. So like, I think they will find out if you plagiarize. But um, anyways, stay tuned for that special announcement I was talking about if you're a first generation or low income student, because I'm super excited about it and I wish I could say more. But I'll be releasing a video about that, but I will be talking about it on my Instagram first. And just letting you guys know, completely free. So be on the lookout, follow my Instagram, and have a great day. Stay subscribed, share this video, comment questions down below, and feel free to DM me with inquiries and questions or comments or feedback because I love hearing from you guys. It really makes my day, especially when I hear that like people really enjoyed my videos or they learned something from it. Like that, I really appreciate that feedback. So yeah, have a good one.